Hello everyone, and welcome back to Never Alone, where we are currently working with the tree and wind spirits here inside of a great frozen forest, doing our best to go ahead and try to make it so that our young girl and her fox companion, who has now died in his fox form, and has been reborn into this new spirit form, who seems to be a child, who is potentially, ah, there we go, who is potentially lost, who knows how long ago, are doing their best to work their way through the frozen forest and escape the grasp of the terrifying man who is definitely out for trouble. I don't know exactly, aha, here we go. I don't know exactly what that man wanted other than the bola, but the bola does seem to be extremely important because it connects the spirits and the girl together and nothing else that we've run into really does that. All right, let's see, how do I, do I guide it this way? Okay, I think I can guide this spirit over here now. And with luck, oh, there it goes. All right, with luck, we'll be able to continue guiding the tree spirits to help us to keep the little girl safe. But it looks like, aha, another one. All right, let me go ahead and collect that. And then let's see what happens when we hit it with the bola. Okay, so it's headed down too. Oh good, it looks like there is something safe for the little girl if we go a little bit lower. And it seems like the tree spirits are doing their best to try to create a safe platform for her. But I just find it so fascinating to think, is that for the little girl's sake? Or is that just because they're responding to the fox? There's something really beautiful and enchanting and kind of scary about the idea that maybe all of these spirits just have no idea that the girl is there, that they're literally holding her life in their hands. Because maybe she's just completely invisible to them, like they normally are to her. All right, let's see if we can bring her any closer. And I wonder if the fox is the only one who can really connect the two at the moment. Whoop, 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 careful. Because he had been just alive, but a moment ago. All right, let's see. Do we want to come down here or go over here? Oh boy. All right, let's see. Maybe the fox spirit can help guide us. Can he find anything over here? Oh, she is coming this way. But then, what about down here? Can she crawl this way? I'm curious, but so was that just if she slipped over here? All right, let's have him come down here and maybe check. For some reason, it just reminds me so much of Spirit Fair right now. All right, let's get the fox spirit back up to help us out. Oh, I see. So this was if you wanted to come and you wanted to see what the owl was up to to get another insight. Rebirth and naming. I love these insights. We have our Timmy, the body which returns to Nuna, the earth. And we have Atik, who is our name that has been passed down to us over the generations. Mm. The spirit of Sorry, I have to talk Atik a little bit now and then, guys. On. Copyright strikes so otherwise. As man remembers that name. It would be hard to describe what happens after death. The mm. feeling is that when our Anirinip returns to Sila, then that may be reborn if the name is passed on to a new child Aww. who can then retain some of the memories of the original name. And so it's wow. not uncommon for grown-ups or adults to meet a child who has the same name maybe as their grandmother and say, hi, Akka, which means grandma, hi, Appa, or hi, little mom, or hi, little dad, because it's a traditional belief that their soul you know, it's continuing on. That's really beautiful. I've only ever Humans heard that in a couple other cultures before. And replenished over time. 
just like our plants. Oh, Every wow. year flowers are born and bloom and they die. Next year they are born again. That's really beautiful. I've only ever heard that mentioned in one or two other cultures before. The idea of passing names on in a way that isn't just in memory. Like, for example, my father is the second of his name. And my brother gave... Oh, no! Hang in there, little girl! I'm sorry! I'm sorry I was thinking about names and legacy and lineage. My father is the second of his name. He's a junior. And my brother gave his son our father's middle name, or my father's first name as a middle name. And I knew a young man in high school when I was young who was actually the 16th of his name, Joseph Carpenter the 16th. And his family had been carpenters for the last 16 generations and had all had boys named Joseph. And to this day, his family were still carpenters, so there was a little bit of pressure for him to carry on the tradition. But that is quite different from thinking that the soul of the person that you loved is still present in this next world, in this next... Well, I wouldn't call it like... Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Reincarnation or rebirth, the next rebirth by carrying on that name. That's really, that's really beautiful. Because imagine how connected you would feel as a child if people were like, hey, grandma, and they, and you were, you were the grandma. Like, they were saying that you might have some of her spirit. That could be very beautiful, I think. Or it could go the other way. And depending on family dynamics could be quite, quite a heavy burden, but... I think it's a beautiful way to think about how we build the meaning of family and how we try to connect the new family we create to the family that has come before us. It's something I think about a lot. I don't have any cool Hawaiian cultural insights <laughs> because my family uh, doesn't really have a lot of a lot of those like deep, deep metaphors of like connecting with the ancestors. I'm just lucky I know my tutu's name. Tutu means elder in Hawaiian, and so I have Tutu Lady. And then if I had had a grandfather, he would have been Tutu Man. There we go. So where are we going now? Let's find out. The tree has been given new spirit, so maybe we need to be lifted up. Aha! What's this? Interesting. Let's see if we can convince this branch to start moving. I like talking with the, the spirit of the trees. Interesting. So maybe we go down now? And then having knocked something down like that, we'll go up. Oh, let's see if he can sense me. Aha! It's a good thing I double checked with him. It's quite fun because this reminds me kind of of Kami, the idea of Kami or like spirits just being innate in everything, in all life and in everything, that around the corner, it's worth searching to see if you can find a small spirit. Oh my. All right, this is a bigger spirit. Oh my. Okay. Maybe I should have the little girl ready? I'm not sure. Maybe the fox. Let's keep him near her. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Alright. Alright. Let's get her working on this. And then jump. Wow. I did not expect that. <laughs> and then the tree goes down. Oh my goodness. I love how these tree spirits are all shaped so differently, too. Okay, let's have her be lifted up by the tree spirit now. A little scary, but not in a bad way, just in a otherworldly way. It reminds me of reading Tangle Root Palace, a short story 
collection on magical and enchanted forests and the way they could be good or bad things. Oh. Oh. Okay. Hang in there. Hang in there. But that was a good book. And I'll need to start telling you guys more and more on my vlog channel soon about the good books that I have been reading. Because the stories really enrich the imagination. Alright, careful. Alright, so if we can come down here, and then up here, and then over here maybe. Good. I'm glad- oh, look at the eyes of the spirits in the background. Kind of scary. Oof. Okay. So, managed to get knocked around by that. That's fine. I used to think that forests would always be safe and pretty and magical places to be in. But recently I've been reading some books and thinking about some realities of just how dangerous a wild forest can be. Oh, I see. I have to lift it out of the way, not to jump on it. See? That have helped me to revisit that idea and to remember that I just happen to live in a time and an era where the danger intrinsic in a forest has been largely removed for me. Once upon a time, just a couple hundred years ago, there were grizzly bears and there were cougars. There were timber wolves. There were things that were very, very dangerous for me to run into on my own in a forest. And now I don't even have to think about that on the east coast of the United States where I live now. Okay, let's get over here and make sure that this tree spirit doesn't just drop into the water without us. Hang in there, little girl. Hang in there. Okay. Okay. I really hope we'll be able to make wherever we're going next. Does that have a spirit in it by chance? Yes. Oh dear. Can she make it to this one? Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> we were supposed to wait until that one. <laughs> See? There is such a poetic idea that a forest will always be a beautiful place of good mysteries and it will always be a place of, of good kinds of fairy tales. But it's been refreshing to read stories of fiction and even stories of accounts of biologists who go wandering in some of the more wild places left in the world with the venomous snakes and diseases born on tiny little insects far from any help that help me remember that a lot of these stories, these legends, this lore, the descriptions of what life it was like come from a time when these were very dangerous places to be. You had to, I would, I would say, address this idea of a forest and coming into it with a lot more humility and respect than we have to do now. Now, very few of us live anywhere we would have anything to be worried about. Let's see, anything here? Okay, no. I guess we were supposed to keep going the other direction. And it just depended on if the fox was able to... Oh! <laughs> No! It looks like we're supposed to climb, but I just don't think we are. Maybe, maybe not. Alright, one last time. My beloved is a historian, as you guys know. And sometimes we often talk about how some of the biggest movements in history were about the times and the era when cities were able to differentiate one another and how important it was 
for people to be able to go ahead and find themselves. Is this where we want to be? Oh boy. Okay, that's a big jump without some help. But how important it was for people to be able to differentiate themselves between being in a forest. Oh, I just don't think we're gonna have any help here. Come on. Is the tree gonna come back up? Oh, he is! I think he is at least. Come on, stay here. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> All right, so it looks like maybe we can guide the spirit tree just a little. All right, I think we're supposed to make this huge jump and just land right up against there. Let's try it. Oh, thank goodness. Oh my gosh. But yes, one of the things that my beloved will tell me is about how important it was for people to be able oh that's a fire a little nervous about this oh dear oh wow I think we just got lucky being able to get like up there the first time but yeah one of the things my beloved will tell me is how important it was for people to be able to go ahead and build walls and to keep out the wild and to be able to define clearly, this is what we will call wild. Ah, oh, I see here, he's waiting for us. And this is what we will call civilized. And the differentiation between those two things meant a lot for people trying to find ways to control their environment to become a little safer. But for now, I kind of want to run into the wild and not into the waiting arms of this fire guy. <laughs> So, if you guys could, do please leave a like for our young girl and her spirit companion as we carry on going deeper into her story. If you guys would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!